Welcome to another Radar Companion video. In this video, we're going to show you what's new in the latest version of RE Companion. This is version 1.04. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run the app. Let it connect up to the radar detector. RE Connected. First thing you'll notice is there a, <clears throat> there's a new mode uh, display up in the upper right that allows you to change the radar detector mode. Just by tapping here. Mode change to highway. You'll see that reflected on the radar detectors, highway. Mode change to city. Mode change to auto. Mode change to advanced. So you can see this very easy to select your mode now without having to fidget around with the radar detector. The other thing you'll notice is there's now a uh, couple of volume sliders down at the bottom of the screen, one for your main volume and one for the auto mute volume. You can just move this slider. R8 volume set to five. And you can change the volume on the radar detector. If you change on the radar detector, you'll see it change on the app as well. So now we'll go back to six. You can also set the auto mute volume how you like it. And this is done quickly and easily without having to mess around with the detector as well. Got those couple of new features on the front main alert screen. And then you also notice up at the top, there's a green uh, settings icon for the R8. Now this may appear somewhere different depending on your phone screen size, but on this particular phone, it's up at the top. And what you can do is go ahead and click on that. And it'll bring up a handful of the most popular settings for the R8. There'll be more settings added throughout uh, the various free upgrades that we do. But this will get you going with some of the most popular ones and allows you to get the settings faster than if you waited until we got all of them done. So you can see here we have the alert display type. That's uh, number one is where it's just the straight bar graph. And then if you go to number two, it'll give you the curved bar graph. You have the brightness selection, so you can click on that. You can see you have all auto bright, dim, dimmer, dark. So if you click on dark, save it, and it'll go ahead and apply that to your detector and the screen goes dark with just the flashing icon on the screen to let you know that it's still running, scanning. So we'll go back here, we'll turn that to auto. And you can see that this display is back. It's nice and quick, easy way without having to go through all the menuing systems. We also have the display color. So you can go ahead and select between all the different colors that uh, Uniden supports on the R8. Uh, you can go back to blue if you'd like. And you can see that it'll automatically change it there on the screen. Change it back to white here. You can also see you can turn on your X band, K band. You know, if you don't have any X band, which is uh, pretty rare to have that these days. Uh, I always leave mine on just in case, but you can go ahead and turn that off if you know there's no X-band. Um, it has the laser on and off, K-band on and off, has K-pop. You can turn it on and off, K-scan. You can tell it how much of the frequency range you want to scan. Wide is the default. You can make it more narrow that's closer to what the actual radar guns put out uh, or extended if you want to cover some of the higher ranges to help with your different types of K-band radar that are out there. We'll stick with the uh, default of wide. We've got the K-filter on-off. That'll help quiet things down or around uh, town with the various K-pollution that's out there. We've got TSF on and off. That's basically if you know that you live in an area that have the traffic flow sensors on the highways and freeways, that every so often it has that radar that things out to determine how the traffic flow is going. So you can turn that on if you're consistently getting a K-band alert every so often. Also helps around town. I just leave mine on as well, even though we don't have those traffic flow sensors. You got your KA band and also the KA scan. This one's nice because you can choose between narrow, wide, and segmented. Um, I go with the segment. As you can see here, uh, because the KA2 segment covers the 338 guns pretty well, uh, segment 5 covers your 347, KA8 does your 355. A lot of people will actually add 4 and 6 as I have because the uh, majority of the guns that are 
in my area are the stalkers and they tend to drift up and down. I've actually had some in the four and six range, so I go ahead and enable those. Uh, so I'm covered on the out of tune guns as well. And this will give you a little faster scan rate. And then you can see you have your MR, CD, and T. Uh, you can turn that on if you know you have that in your area. I don't have that, so it's off. Same with Gatso. Also the auto mute. So after uh, a few seconds, the auto mute will kick in. So you can go ahead and turn that on if you'd like to have it muted automatically. That's that mute volume that's on the main alert screen. Controls how loud that is. And you can choose your priority alert. I always have it set to KA just because we have a lot of KA around. You can also change that to be signal. If you want the strongest signal to be the highest priority. You also have the auto mute memory on and off. Because I'm using the app uh, with its uh, more advanced location lockouts, I turn the auto mute memory off. So I don't use that at all. I just want to have the app control everything. But if you do want to run with that on so that if you don't have the app and you run the radar detector, you'll still have those memorized locations. You can also go ahead and reset to factory defaults. That'll put all these settings that are on the screen to their factory defaults. It won't mess with any of the other ones that are in the detector, just the currently available ones in the app. And you can quickly do that. Go ahead and save those again. Um, a couple of other features that we've added in this is the ability here. We'll go ahead and go to the map screen. You'll see down here we have apply to R8 mute memory. That's talking about the spot locks which is the advanced location lockouts. So when the app determines that it should be a spot that's locked out, you can have it apply that also to your R8 mute memory so that when you don't have the app running, it'll have those locations in the radar detector as well. I actually like to run with this one off. It's just so there's a cleaner and a safer version of the lo location lockouts in the app controlling your radar detector so that you're, if you're in a spot that's been locked out by the app, you have a better chance that if a legitimate radar hits, that it'll uh, alert and sound. So it's up to you if you want to run that on or off. I just run it off because I'm always running the app. Like I say, if you're not consistently running the app, then you could leave that on and then it would write those as it finds them. So you don't have to mess around doing your mute memories manually. Another feature request that we've had is found in the audio, and it's right here. It's called Spot Locks. And what that does, it turns off the voice announcement. If you've been running the app, you'll notice as you go through uh, uh, locations every once in a while when it locks out, it'll say Spot Locked K-Band. If you uh, do not like to get those, then you can go ahead and just turn that off, and then you won't have to worry about them. So that basically covers all the uh, new features for this version. There's also been some under the hood changes to the various systems and the uh, engine that does all the muting. So everything's kind of been optimized a little bit more and performs better. Um, that's all the new features for this version. I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe. Also, please uh, leave any comments about any of the settings that you'd like to see in the next version coming out. So we can add more of the radar detector settings to the app. Let me know what some of your favorite ones are that you want to have quick access to. Um, just as a little bonus to this video, I want to go ahead and show people how to change the uh, voice that's used within uh, our eight companions, all the companion apps. So if you go to audio you can to a test. Several strong KA band 34.724 ahead. All clear. And people have been wondering how to change that voice. And it's really easy. Uh, it basically goes and uses the voice settings. So if you go ahead and go into settings, go to accessibility, scroll down until you see. Spoken content, went past it. Um, here you can go in and choose the voices. Choose the language that you want. The only trick with this is Apple does not allow apps to use the Siri voice. So don't choose the Siri voice. That will not work. You can see I've selected Tom. 
uh, enhanced. If you go into the different voices and it has uh, the name of the voice and another one with enhanced next to it, the enhanced one has a higher bit rate and a much cleaner sounding. Now you can see it's a lot bigger in size, but it's not really that big compared to what you have storage availability on your, on your phone. So I always use the enhanced version, sounds better. So for example, we can go over here to Samantha. We'll go ahead and quickly download the enhanced version and show you how that changes in the app. It's really slick. These voices are only used for the apps. So by changing this voice, it won't change anything like your Siri. Siri is controlled by itself. And like I said, you can't use the Siri voices and what you select here doesn't affect Siri at all. So you can feel free to use whatever you want here. So once you select Samantha, go back, go into the audio, test it. Several strong KA band 34.724 ahead, all clear. And so you can see that the voice has changed. So it's a really easy way to get your voice to be how you want it. Thanks again for watching this video.